4. Dramatic Forms and Genre In week 4, we will study different dramatic forms and genres. We also will look at inspiring films and filmmakers. By combining theme with dramatic form, we will explore ways of finding your own voice. In part one of this week's session, we will look at film genre and dramatic forms and conventions. In part two of this week's session, we will look at television dramatic forms and conventions. Part one. Firstly, I'd like you to read chapter four, structure and genre of Robert McKee's story published by Methuen Film. In this chapter, McKee outlines genre and subgenre and goes on to describe dramatic conventions in the pursuit of particular genres. After you, af, af, sorry. After you have read the chapter, we will have an online discussion where we will raise the following questions for debate. 1. What are your favourite genres and why? What do you find interesting and compelling about them? 2. Would you think of a genre first and then an idea or the other way round? Please give your reasons. 3. Are you an exponent of genre or are you interested in character and story, regardless of the genre it follows? Does genre inspire new ideas for your idea portfolio? I hope the answer to question 4 is yes, otherwise you might find the first exercise a little taxing. Exercise 1. Please select one genre type from McKee's list in Chapter 4 of Story. I re recommend selecting a genre that interests you. Please think of an idea based on the genre. Please write 200 words describing your story idea. Take your time with this exercise. If you are satisfied, then please add it to your portfolio. By doing this exercise, you will begin to understand how genre and story conventions work. It is up to you as the writer to bring originality to convention. By completing this exercise, you will also begin to understand film language, a vast subject that you will practice and learn about for the rest of your writing, viewing and reading lives. So how do we begin? By film language, I mean what choices do you make in how you structure and design your story? How do you manage conflict and information? Film language could mean in very simple terms flashbacks or tension or surprise. I think the best way to learn about film language is by practicing. For your second exercise, please watch The Full Monty, written by Simon Beaufoy, much garlanded for his Slumdog Millionaire script. Then complete the following questionnaire using the film Monty. Sorry, I'll do that sentence again. Then complete the following questionnaire using the full Monty. 1. Describe the film The Full Monty in no more than three sentences. 2. Who is the main protagonist? 3. What is the main plot of the story? 4. What is or what are the subplots? 5. What is the main protagonist's goal? 6. When do we find out what that main goal is? 7. What are the sub-goals? In other words, what are the goals that help your main protagonist reach their main goal? What are the main sequences in the story? Is there an inciting incident? If so, what is it and when does it occur? What's the climax to the film? Does the main protagonist reach their goal? When does the film reach Act 2? When does it reach Act 3? Is there a mid-act climax in Act 2? If so, what is it? If the climax is mid-act, do they then have a new goal? What is it? How do we play with managing information? From whose point of view is the story told? Do we see the story from other characters' points of view?
Do you have dramatic ironies in the film? Dramatic irony is a particular way of managing information when we, the audience, know something before a character does, i.e. we know the main protagonist's wife is going to leave him because we've seen her packing. Meanwhile, he innocently returns home, oblivious to this. It can work the other way round too, where a character knows something we don't know. So a character might have been a spy or a mole all along and we only find out at the end. What are the local ironies? As the story unfolds, are things revealed to the audience that any of the characters do not know about or vice versa? What is the global irony? To explain this question, I mean, does the main protagonist think in a particular way that is different to how we might feel about him or her, i.e. she believes the world is going to end or she believes she is a loser? What are the main surprises in, this, in the story? There should always be surprises, subtle or otherwise. If not one surprise in the story, there is probably a problem. Is there any mystery in the film? Can you define what is at stake in the film? What is at risk if the character fails? 25. Why will the audience care? 26. Why do we want to know what happens next? This is crucial. Please carefully describe in detail why we want to know what happens next in the full Monty. Is it because we care about the characters? Is it because we hope that their goals are reachable? Do we hope that they have a good life if they indeed reach their goals? By completing this exercise, you'll be on your way to, f to understanding film language and how writers make decisions on how they're going to tell their story. When you try it for yourself, you will use instinct and talent to tell your story. But the more you understand film language, the more your, your talent has a chance to develop. I re recommend only completing the questionnaire on one of your ideas when you're at outline stage. And so to sum up part, of, part one of this week's lecture, we've looked at genre and dramatic conventions to help us understand the art of storytelling. So a love story within a horror film would be told very differently than a love story in a romance. Different language, different action, different locations, different types of characters. Without using to control our, sorry, do that sentence again. We have also looked at film language and looked at how Simon Beaufoy approached his script, The Full Monty, the choices he made in how he imparted information to his audience. This can help us approach our own stories so we know the techniques we can deploy to tell our story in the most compelling and engaging way we can think of. We must write instinctively, but we must be thoughtful and organised so that we can be original too. Part 2 how are television series and serials structured and what conventions do they follow and exploit? This section will be of particular interest to those of you who are keen to write for this medium. There are four different drama formats on television. Single drama, serial, series, long-running drama or soaps. A single drama is a one-off, self-contained drama, just like a feature film, but made for the television, obviously. A serial is a self-contained drama that runs over several episodes, either two parts, three, four or six parts. It's a bit like a feature film and is structured in a similar way, only it lasts longer and it uses hooks at the end of each episode so we keep tuning in. 
A series, which is what we will be concentrating on today, is character-led and is ongoing with a single storyline that is resolved every week and two ongoing storylines. Series will be at least 12 episodes long and will return to our screens again and again over the years. The most successful drama series in the world is the UK's own casualty. Sometimes they last 30 minutes, but usually they last one hour. The same structure applies to situation comedies. A soap opera only uses continuing storylines and lasts 30 minutes. For your third exercise this week, please watch an example of each of the above. An example of a single drama is the BAFTA award-winning Boy A, about a child murderer released from prison. An example of a serial is the BAFTA award-winning Edge of Darkness, first televised in the 1980s and written by Troy Kennedy Martin. One of the most popular types of serials on British televisions are adaptations of classic novels, such as the recent Tess of the D'Urbervilles. An example of a series is the aforementioned Casualty. You could choose something more substantial, in my opinion, like The, the Sopranos. An example of a soap opera is East Enders. I would recommend watching BBC One's daytime soap Doctors, as they employ new writers to television, so it might be one to keep an eye on if this is a path you'd like to follow. Before we continue, a word about writing for television. When I was a girl, I watched a lot of TV. Why play outside in the sunshine when there was something good on the telly to watch? I grew up watching Play for Today, The Wednesday Play and Armchair Theatre, three slots devoted entirely to new writers telling their own stories. Those days have long gone. On terrestrial television in the UK, I think it is only Channel 4 who offer the same opportunities for writers new to the screen, with their wonderful annual coming up half hour slot. But the BBC, for example, still employs 600 writers per year. And again, in my opinion, there are two types of writers. Those who write their own original material for shorts and feature films, and those who write for existing dramas. It might appear that writing your own material is by far the better choice, but I would have to disagree. As a script editor, I have had... I have the utmost respect for television writers who are able to absorb and empathise with characters not of their own creation and generate storylines and ideas. Secondly, as a television writer, you will have the opportunity to work with some of the most talented individuals in the industry. Let's imagine you had the good fortune to write for Doctor Who. Um, what was once an outdated format has been taken on with by Philip Collinson, one of the brightest producers there is. Furthermore, as the BBC alone employs 600 writers annually, there are far more opportunities to write in television than there are in film. I firmly believe that both avenues, feature films and television drama, are of equal merit, but they require different approaches. We will return to the subject of approach later. But now let's have a look at the structure of a television series. I won't cover single dramas and serials because they are structured in the same way as a feature film, using the three-act structure. Series, on the other hand, are different. Structuring a television series. As I briefly explained earlier, in each episode of a television series there are three storylines. The A story, the B story and the C story. In each episode of a drama series, there will be a theme that each of, each of the storyline pursues. So it could be All Work and No Play, or it could be Love Conquers All. The A story is a self-contained story. By that I mean it has within that single episode a beginning, middle and end. And once that episode is finished, we will not return to the story again. So using casualty as an example, let's imagine that the theme for the week is all work and no play. In our A story, we will see a guest character, let's say a male middle-aged workaholic who has a massive heart attack. 
In Casualty, they use illness or an accident as a catalyst for their ace story guest character to face up to and resolve deeper character-driven issues in their lives. So, the middle-aged man learns not to neglect his estranged family anymore by working too hard. I'll give you another example. There's an episode of Sex and the City called Freaks. So that was the theme for that episode. The A story followed our main protagonist, Carrie, dating a series of very peculiar men. Demoralised and scared of dating again, she then meets a lovely ordinary man. But then she goes on to spoil their relationship by acting like a freak herself. Within the body of the episode, you are still following the basic three-act structure. Your main protagonist in my casualty episode is the middle-aged man. He has a goal, he tries to reach it, to work hard and be successful, but he cannot reach it because he has a, a heart attack and he is forced to change. Often in series such hospital dramas, police dramas, courtroom dramas, the main protagonist does not reach their goal and is forced to reevaluate re and then change. Next comes the B story. The B story is either, sorry I'll say that again, the B story can either be self-contained or ongoing. It involves the regular characters and relates to the episode theme. In our case, all work and no play, and therefore to the A story. So in casualty, it could be one of the regular doctors who works too hard and becomes ill and stressed and therefore lets her colleagues down. Or it could be the opposite. It could be a regular doctor who is distracted by something happening in her life outside the hospital and isn't pulling her weight. If the storyline is ongoing, it will be left open-ended to be developed in further episodes. C. The C story is the shortest storyline and can be light-hearted or even comedic. It is usually self-contained but can be ongoing and it too relates to the theme. So the lazy doctor might be distracted by a patient she fancies. Cue comedy moments where the doctor wonders if she could ask the patient out while stitching his hand. So the art of writing a series episode is to be able to weave the A, B and C stories together whilst understanding that the ongoing storylines need to be to pick up where the last episode left off and set up so the storyline can continue in the next episode. This might seem baffling but fear not, there are ways of organising your writing that I will now explain. Let's go through it a step at a time from when a series first comes into being. Firstly, a writer or producer thinks of an idea for a series. The idea is expanded into a series synopsis or outlines. It will also include character biographies for all the main protagonists and the supporting characters. It will describe the setting. I'll use an example of a series I used to script edit for, Peak Practice. So, Lucy Gannon, the writer, created a series about two married doctors who settled in a Derbyshire village and opened up a surgery. The supporting characters ran a pub, were retired, worked at the surgery, or were regular patients, or the children of the doctors, or other doctors' partners, and so on. There will be an overarching goal that applies to the entire series. In this case, the two doctors wanted to make sure that their community enjoyed physical, mental and emotional well-being. Whilst this goal might sometimes be subtle, it prevails in each episode and it's the reason we keep watching week after week, because we admire that, that overarching theme. The overarching goal must be strong enough to sustain multiple episodes, which is why it's so difficult to create drama series. Usually the goal is something that the viewing public relate to. So we might watch Doc Martin because we too believe in community and family. We might watch Skins because we believe in freedom and having a good time. However, there are wonderful exceptions to the rule. So The Sopranos forced us to look at and empathise with the morals and belief systems of a mafia family. Armed with a series outline, a description of the setting and character biographies collectively known as the series bible, the lead writer, the script editors and the producers are able to start plotting out each episode, 
producing an outline and a scene breakdown. The, the approach to this must be decided on by the creative team, especially the writer. Some writers incorporate each storyline. Others write the A story first, then the B story, then the C story, and then they incorporate them. At this stage, it is not helpful. Oh, fucking wide. Sorry about that. At this stage, it is not helpful to get too bogged down in the detail. Each episode outline will probably be about 2,500 words. 3. Next, the writer will write a scene breakdown or treatment for each episode, with comments and notes from the editors and producers. 4. Finally, the lead writer is able to start writing the episode. 5. It is common for the series creator, otherwise known as the lead writer, to write the entire first series, such as Paul Abbott did when he created Shameless. During subsequent series, when the series is established and intimately known by the production team, the creator or lead writer is able to hand it over to other writers. It is not unusual for the outlines and treatments and scripts to go through at least three drafts before it is ready for production. For your fourth exercise, I would like you to create your own drama series. Don't think about this too much. It could simply be a policewoman in a gritty urban environment or a gentler rural setting. Next, I would like you to write your own series bible. Include an outline of the series concept, a description of the setting, the overarching goal and theme, and character biographies. Please include in your character profiles an idea of the goals the characters have. It could be to look after their child who has a physical disability, for example. The setting should also provide you with some opportunity for conflict and drama. So, for example, the values of a village are under constant implicit threat of erosion by an ever-changing world. The main protagonist's overarching goal should be clear. I would also like you to think of who your aud audience is. Doc Martin has a very different audience to Skins, for example. Think carefully about how your audience relates to the series. Next, I would like you to write an episode outline. Don't choose the first episode because that is invariably concerned with establishing the characters and setting. Choose a midway episode instead. I would like you to write a paragraph for each for A, B and C story, keeping them separate. Finally, I would like you to write 250 words incorporating the three storylines. One final point. Don't forget to end your episode with that all-important hook. You want to ensure that your audience returns next week. By the way, if you would prefer to write a situation comedy, do so. As I mentioned before, situation comedies follow the same structure as a series, even though they are usually only half an hour long. I'd like to recap on what I've said before about situation comedies if you decide on this option. 1. Your main protagonist has a very clear goal that means more to them than anything else in the world. For David Brent in the office, it was to gain and keep the respect and love of his staff. 2. Your main protagonist is his or her own worst enemy. Their episode goals are thwarted, not because of the world around them, because, but because of who they are as characters. David Brent is unintelligent and insensitive, greedy and self-serving, but he still tries to gain respect. Horrible and oh so funny. 3. Situation comedies are funny not because of what happens to your main protagonist, but because of who they are as a person and how they react to a certain situation. You have a lot to do this week, but we must press on. It might appear daunting, but remember, if you want to work in film and television, you must be able to commit 100%. So I suppose this is good practice. And if you have time, have a look at one or two classic serials from our book and film list. If you're having trouble choosing, two of my particular favourites are Blue Remembered Hills by Dennis Potter and Edge of Darkness by Troy Kennedy Martin. Portfolio of Ideas 
Please add to your add your genre based feature script idea and your series idea to your portfolio. Ends.